parents of one of my best friends, in fact, the, the, the man who introduced me to Stacy, his parents, it was about a, four years ago to this week. It was the week after Thanksgiving. And they were driving over to their other son's house, just a couple of blocks from their house, to go look at Christmas lights that they had put up. And as they were driving home, they were literally a block from their house. They got T-boned by a drunk driver, and both of them instantly died. I think it was kind of a gift that they both got taken together. So I think that's kind of cool. But, uh, but they were just out looking at Christmas lights. So to borrow a term from the ticket, we've got to get right with Paul. Okay, we've got to get right with God. We've got to use this time to get refocused in our lives so that we can be the model for our family and friends because we don't know the day or the hour. And we don't want to have that regret of the woulda, coulda, shoulda. You have control over, you have some control over what you can do in your spiritual life. You have no control over your friends and family. All you can do is pray for them and be the model for them. You can't. If you have children, you have figured this out a long time ago. You can't make anybody do anything. So, that old, and have any former Boy Scouts in here? What's the motto of the Boy Scouts? Be prepared. Be prepared. That's what we're called to be. Be prepared. Because we're not called to be afraid of death. I don't know about y'all, but this time, this time of the year is, um, I get very reflective on these readings. And it really uh, reminds me of my mortality. And <coughs> as we get older, it just seems like the days go by faster, doesn't it? I mean, it just seems like I woke up and it, yesterday, and it was just the beginning of the school year, and here we are, you know, I'm a school teacher, and here we are, and you're at the end of the first semester. It just goes like that. I met with one of my former students the other day, and she's graduating law school. It just seemed to me like she just graduated from high school yesterday. So during this time of, of Advent as well, some of the other things that we can do is not get so caught up in all the and all the clutter, and, you know, it's good to give gifts, but maybe we're, um, <coughs> we do that in moderation, that we don't go overboard with the gift giving and make it about uh, materialism. You know, the gifts that we give don't always have to be material things. It can be the gift of time, the gift of your love. And I know that this is a time when we get pulled in all sorts of directions with this Christmas party and that Christmas party. You need now to decide what you're going to... What are the... Because unbelievably, people get stressed out during this time. Holidays are the time when people get blue. Didn't Elvis have a song about that? Gonna have a blue Christmas without you. Um... You can make those choices. You can decide which parties you're going to go to or what activities you're going to do and what you're not going to do. Make those decisions now so you don't get stressed out about them. Pick what you have to do. You know, like I know Stacy's got to go to her Christmas party, so we're going to do that. And we, we made some plans around that too, you know. I've got some hotel points. We're going to stay at the hotel where they're having the party, so we don't have to worry about coming home, take care of that sort of thing. And then we're going to look at some of the things that we want to do for some of the things that we might have invited to. And then we're going to just say no to some of them. So we can spend time together, okay, and with family. Spiritually, all right, I'm going to assume for a moment that all of you have a daily prayer schedule. And if you don't, you need to. Now's the time to get started. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay, maybe that means just not hitting the snooze button in the morning. Okay? Spend 15 minutes in the morning in daily prayer. Starting off with an offering. Offer the day to our Lord. Okay? And everything that you do. It can be really simple. 
You know, I've done a variation of uh, the Fatima prayer, and it's, um, Heavenly Father, I consecrate myself to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and I offer everything that I am, everything I do, all my work, my joys, my prayers and sufferings, to your intentions, and to the intentions of Pope Benedict XVI, and all your bishops, as well as those intentions of my friends and family, most especially the members of Opus Dei, and then any special intention I have, and I enjoin those with the perfect offering of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus at today's Mass. Amen. That's a simple prayer that took less than half a minute. And you can do your own variation. That's my prayer. I, I borrowed from this saint and that saint, and this is the prayer that, you know, and sometimes I forget first thing in the morning, but I get a nice little reminder on my way to work because I passed St. Rita's. And when I pass St. Rita's, I know that Christ is present in that tabernacle. So I do a sign of the cross, and that reminds me that if I haven't done my offering for that morning, that I get to do that. And there's another little thing that I get to do is that at school, you know, it's state law in the state of Texas that they have to do the Pledge of Allegiance. And then I don't know who it was that incorporated this, but immediately after the Pledge of Allegiance, I have to have a moment of silence. I make an offering for that day. And then when I'm done, because I work with some people that don't like this, I'll do the sign of the cross. Because they can't stop me from doing that. Alright? So, start the day with a morning offering. 15 minutes of prayer. One of the things that you can do is take the daily readings. If you're not doing this already, do it. Okay? And you can use the Joe Catholic website to do this, because off to the right, I have the link to the daily readings from the U.S. bishops every morning. Just click on them, read them. That takes about eight minutes. Then right immediately under that, or video reflections. Those video reflections range from two minutes to three minutes. They are wonderful reflections. These are people from different dioceses. Most of them work for the U.S. Bishop's office. They're not all priests. Some of them are lay people, just like you and me. And they'll give wonderful reflections. And that's a good way to just start off the day, that you are in, that you're aligning your life with the liturgy of the church. You know, and if, if you want to be uh, what I call a a special forces sort of guy. And you want to you go the extra mile, you can pray the liturgy of the hours. But if you're already doing something like that, now's the time to kind of uh, mix things up a little bit. Maybe one of the things that you do is Magnificat puts out a wonderful Advent reflection. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a, uh, a review of, of their... Uh, mobile application for that that's available on all the different platforms. Everything from Amazon's Kindle to the iPhone app. And it's like a dollar. It's 99 cents. Okay? And you can do that. It's a reflection on every daily reading but then it, it, and there are other things. I did the one for Lent and they're marvelous. Alright. And then one other final thing I would say is pick up a good spiritual book. A classic. The two I'm going to recommend to you because they're for the laity are the following. When I tell my students when I say the following and I stop like that, that's a note that they should write this down. <laughs> the first one you hear me quote from all the time. It's called The Way by St. Jose, Ma Jose Maria Escriva. I love that book because they're just little nuggets of truth and wisdom. Okay, It's a little book. It's 999 points, spiritual points. You can read as many as you want to in a day. They're organized topically. Okay, three, four, or five of those in the morning. Or you can just go through and say, all right, what does is, what is St. Jose Maria say about prayer? What does he say about cheerfulness? What does he say about suffering? Okay, that's the first one. The second one is called Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales. The cool thing about St. Francis de Sales book is you can find that free online as a PDF or an e-book for those of you that have. It's called Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales. He was way ahead of his time. He was talking about, you know, he was talking about the universal call of holiness like, and I don't even remember what century he was in. A long time ago. Over hundreds of years ago. You know, I often talk about how San Jose Maria in the 1920s and 30s was ahead of his time. But much of what he was talking about, he got from St. Francis de Sales. You ever notice how these saints all kind of overlap on each other? It's because it's the truth. They're all just telling us what Christ told us. 
right. Other things that we can, how am I doing on time? You're at 20 minutes. Can you repeat the text, please? I'm sorry, 753? Yeah. Okay. It's Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales. And I've done a review of that book as well. And I think on the review, if you just do um, St. Francis de Sales, if you do that search on the Joe Catholic website, it'll pull up the review that I did of that book. And there are links on there to find it in audio format as well as. Um, an ebook format for those of you that use those sort of things. The, the audio, there's a, 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 a company called um, Cla Classics in Christian Literature, and they did for free. They've taken some of these books that are in the public domain and <coughs> put them in audio and ebook format. Yes, sir. And what religious order did he found? The St. Francis de Sales founded. Well, he didn't find the found the Salesians because that was um, that was Saint John Bosco. Yeah, yeah. So, what order did you just trying to trip me up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. My mother had uh, when I was in the army, uh, she would send me these little booklets of the Salesians, these little meditation booklets from the Salesians. And I have a great devotion to Saint John Bosco because he's a patron of school children. All right, so finally, there's some things that we can do with our parish. We can get plugged in to the liturgies that we celebrate. You know, next week we have a holy day of obligation on a Saturday. Saturday. I can't remember the last time we've done that. Okay, so forget the fact. That, <coughs> or don't forget the fact. It's a holy day of obligation, but it's another opportunity to celebrate the Eucharist. So go. And then, in, you know, it's like this time of Advent also, there are a ton of, um, of Marian holidays as well. On December the 12th, we're going to celebrate the feast, the feast, the patroness of the Americas and of the unborn, Our Lady of Guadalupe. We're going to have a bilingual mass. Okay? If you've never been to this mass, you've got to attend because the, it, the, the procession in is like nothing you've ever seen before, and it is quite moving. Okay. And we'll talk about Our Lady Guadalupe at our next gathering. Yes. All right, so finally, some other thing, you know, uh, some of the local things that take place, like posadas or other cultural activities that may take place. Uh, the Advent, re uh, Advent wreath lighting. Okay, I think it would be awesome to see. Okay, uh, to see some of us uh, be the ones to, to light those candles at the beginning of the Mass. You can do that, you can volunteer. Okay, uh, and any of the other year of faith activities that we have going on uh, on the December calendar, and you can pick out one of those as you walk out the church. Uh, they have those. I think this this month's color is some gold, the paper. Okay. Uh, finally, a, a couple of two final things I want to say. Choose your entertainment strategically during this time. Okay. One of the things that Stacy and I recently did is we went to go see the Christmas Carol play at the Dallas Theater Center. Okay, I love that story because it is a story of redemption. Everybody know what I'm talking about? Scrooge? Mm -hmm. That is a Christian story. It's the story of God's love and mercy. That man was given a second chance. It's a one I cry every time at the end of that play. I've seen that play about 30, 30 some odd times. I love that play. It's part of our Christmas tradition. Okay, and we got to go to their opening night. Um Y'all interested for next year, you'll let me know because we got to go, we had third row seats and we paid a dollar for four seats. A dollar each or a dollar? A dollar total. Wow. And then we made a donation to the North uh, Texas Food Bank at the end. Anyway. Um, plan to watch your favorite Christmas movie with your family. My favorite Christmas movie is It's a Wonderful Life. Okay, Because I think that, that talks about... That, that movie lends itself to the apostolic life and the new evangelization about how we touch other people's lives and we don't even realize it. And then finally, develop or pass on the traditions that your family had with you. And we're going to talk about this more at next gathering of things that you do with your family. We did this last year, remember? When we talked about some of our traditions, uh, you know, like, do you do the Advent wreath with your family? Do you do, uh, like, my family, one of the things that my mom passed on to us is that we put one candle out in the window, and it's a reminder uh, of Mary and Joseph passing that our house is open to you.
Okay, and then some people do the Jesse trick. So figure out, you know, and if you don't know what your family traditions are, if, if you have some of your older family members, get with them and just pass one thing on to your kids. All right? Make this Advent season a prayerful Advent season that enlivens your spiritual life. God bless you.